next point that we have, the next topic rather, is creating partnerships across national borders and academic disciplines and promoting a multidisciplinary, multi-stakeholder, transnational, global network to advance UN Sustainable Development Goals. Dr. Renuka Thakore, founder of the Global Sustainable Future Congress, Progress sorry, through Partnerships Network UK. Dr. Renuka is named Leaders of the Development Governor Enrique Thomas Cresto and was awarded the Global SDGs Women Ambassador Award for year 2022. Dr. Renuka is recognized for her work as a global leader who's engaged and connected with academics, businesses, and individuals bringing together Global South and Global North to involve them in climate adaptation, resilience, and not just transition. Over to you, Dr. Renuka. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Whoever has joined from uh, with us today from the rest of the world and from UK, I'm very honored to be here today and thank you uh, Santosh Ganesh, the support team and the moderator for organizing this mega event, Global Sustainable Development Summit 2022. Very pleased to be here. So today I wanted to first share my story of creating partnerships across national borders and academic disciplines and promoting a multidisciplinary, multi-stakeholder, transnational, global network to advance UN Global Sustainable Development Goals. But when I heard the whole proposal of the summit and the previous speakers, and especially the last speaker, I reversed my presentation to first focus on unlocking the potential of micro, small, and medium enterprises for SDGs. I don't need to emphasize the most businesses in the world fall into this category. And especially from the UK perspective, 99.6% of enterprises are SMEs. And I believe all of the previous speakers have definitely stressed the point of how much these businesses can contribute to climate change and the current uh, different uh, various problems of the world, including how they can be a part of contributing to SDGs. We have also heard previous speaker on what support they can give, including tools and technologies, what are available in there to reduce carbon emissions, reduce other inequalities and contribute to sustainable development goals. But the most doubting question would each and every SME would have, how to start unlocking these potentials? What I need to do in my business, how can I structure the pro approach to have a complete and comprehensive sustainability categories that can allow me to achieve sustainability, corporate social responsibility in its fullness, and to contribute to sustainable development goals. And therefore, I want to propose these four elements which would definitely help you to act, measure, and lead on your leadership of this sustainability journey. So every company will need to focus on having their operations contribute to net zero emissions. Of course, many, many technologies, support tools have been already discussed and presented to you. So why not reach them out? But also this means that you need to focus on your own operation. First of all, understand your own operation and move to the use of renewable energy. As an SME, it is very easy to achieve that through solar, water or hydro or wind, et cetera, depending on what natural resources are available in your close contact, in your close neighborhood and easily and with plenty of uh, having an employment uh, opportunities. Through this change, you will be able to contribute to SDG 7, 12, 13, 14, and 15 immediately. Remember, you must have all your emissions measured 
and reduced in line with the science-based targets. And you will have to put a system in place to map, measure, and monitor your direct, indirect, and other indirect emissions resulting from all the activities. Having this in place, you will have to work on your own operations, inventory of your operations, your all activities. And that is for you to take the leadership. Unless you have done that, you will not be able to make any change. Not a single change is possible without measuring anything, mapping anything. And therefore you will have to take the leadership. And having this place uh, in place will allow you to be part of United SDGs. And also United Nation Global Compact. United Nation Global Compact is a, uh, is a place where you can meet yourself to get to net zero. And there are already plenty of small organizations being part of that global compact. And I would recommend you to visit that website and uh, learn about it. The second category is about human resources. You must take care of your employees' health and safety, working condition, labor relationship, career management, and child and forced labor, et cetera. Which means, again, you need to look into your operations to find out what is missing or what potential you have to improve on these categories or elements of these categories. You must increase diversity, equality, inclusion in your human capital and consider it when you are dealing it with the suppliers also. Through these changes, you will be definitely positively contributing to SDG 5, 8, 10, 30. So again, I would like to stress the point that everything lies in your hand. You must start doing and understanding your operations immediately in a sense with the science and research and your education. Next category, of course, is environment management. Energy consumption and, and uh, greenhouse gases are the most important and the most significant part of environment management. And previous speakers and uh, along the line, the speakers will definitely uh, speak about this energy uh, consumption. And there are plenty of innovative tools and uh, technologies there to reduce your carbon emissions. To the most importantly, you need to be using energy efficient products your processes must be energy efficient and the services and the clean renewable energy. Address the issue of water consumption and the discharge issues in your company. Address the impacts resulting from hazardous and non hazardous air emissions other than the GS uh, uh, carbon emissions. For example, like uh, sodium oxide, uh, or nitrogen oxide and VOC, uh, particular ma particle man material and dust. And, and also you must address emission, emissions polluting the local environment through odor, no, noise, and light. This all must reflect on your company's management and your company management must consider all the raw materials, chemicals, and non hazardous and hazardous waste to be disposed that are generated through your operations to be disposed into a responsible way. And you should be taking care of that disposal and be applying to the waste regulations. And you must try to decrease your waste generation as much as possible, even the waste of time and waste of resources in the form of human capital. You must reduce the impact of operations and on protected areas, probably forest, endangered species, and so on. And you must promote sustainable consumption through your supply chain. Environment management is a great contributor like if you manage your environment 
within the all the aspects of environment, it will be you will be greatly contributing to SDG 3, 6, 7, 9, 11, 12, 14, 15. And next, I would emphasize increase regulations within your business ethics, Re increase policies and, and uh, your actions towards the issues such as bribery, information security, all are these very important concerns for all companies. These are the threats to the fair business practices and they should arise they, they arise often when you are in some risky country or you are working with uh, government contracts. So you need to be very careful about all these. Implementing proper policies, actions, and also creating awareness between your employees and the suppliers, you will be contributing to growing expectations of all the companies who are going who are trying to address these basic threats of corruption and by bribery. Having ethical policies and embedding ethical practices in the company, you will be issuing, like you will be uh, addressing these issues properly and you will directly impact SDGs 1, 2, 5, 10, 12, 13, and 16. So now I would move, why then, if everything lies in your hand, why then I would emphasize that cooperatives, partnerships, creative circular economy, how they are useful. And let me explain you how they can play a vital role for sustainable development. I completely agree that my previous speakers have already touched on this and they have mentioned plenty of different models in which you can work. And I feel that cooperative is a very uh, important model to be added in such situations like in these complex situations where, in which we are. A cooperative is an autonomous association of per persons who voluntarily get involved in economic or social or cultural activities. But what is interesting here is that they are the owner of this activity and therefore they play an equal part and they have equal stake in having this um, community or the activity working. And the main values behind these cooperatives are democracy, self-help, self-responsibility, equality, equity, and solidarity. And therefore, we must create a better, if we want to create a better world, we must have the cooperatives. The secondly is partnership. And I'm, I'm not talking too much about here as a traditional partnerships which are going on uh, since many years, but I am talking about which, which are, have value of only economic gain. But I am referring here of a strategic partnership program with say, for example, a community and the placemaker, or, a, or you can reach out to your supply chain and maybe you can make one of your suppliers a partner to move towards the, journey of sustainability and empower them. You can move to your making uh, your employees as partners and maybe uh, reach out to them with an equal share of benefits because they are also contributing to your uh, benefits as a, an organization fully. And therefore, I think you need to have a partnerships, meaningful partnerships to reach SDGs. And, and finally, I would come to creative and economic uh, circular economy. And I think many of the speakers have already explained a lot about circular economy. And, it, and the values which lies here are eliminating waste and population uh, pollution here. And we need to have a circular product and material which can uh, give our customer the highest value and also the val equivalent value to you. And gen regenerative nature type of uh, products and processes should be in place. 
And finally, now I come to my mentioning about all about my comp, uh, my network here. Uh, but however, uh, I, I won't be dwelling too much on it because I have very less time. But uh, what we need to do is strengthen science, technology, and innovation, particularly in global south. This requires a systems approach. We need to develop our capacities and a more profound linkage between research, policy, and practice. And that can speed up transitions to an innovation-led, knowledge-based economy. Through several strategies, are uh, like uh, we can address specific barriers. And for that, I believe we need to have an open, inclusive, and proactive engaging platform for developing and disseminating empirical research and monitoring and evaluating their effectiveness in delivering SDGs. And therefore, I did not find any such platform uh, when I started my platform in 2021, January. And therefore, I took the challenge of opening up an open, free, transparent global network, and everyone can join here, learn, and share their stories, ideas related to any sustainable development goals. And so I wanted to share my vision and objectives through the short video here. Uh, actually, this slide has a short video. And if you click to that video, I will be sending a PDF of my presentation. And if you click on this video, you will definitely get a snapshot. It is a small TED talk by me, and uh, that has my vision for Global Sustainable Futures Network. And therefore, I would uh, urge you to at least watch this five minute video. And therefore, I, in my personal capacity, I am a consultant, like uh, I am a lecturer and a researcher at two universities part time. But however, I am also in my personal capacity. I'm a consultant for sustainability and sustainable development goals for SMEs. So you can contact me for any help if you need or any support you may need. But I will also invite you to join my network. And finally, I would say let's all swing high in the sky and beyond through this network. Thank you very much for having me here and connect me to whichever the channel you are in. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Renuka. It was a pleasure to have you.